The Our Town grantees we are announcing today are all part of partnerships that involve arts organizations, local government, and other community and business leaders. These coalitions came together because elected and community leaders know from experience what Mark Stern at the University of Pennsylvania has shown scientifically. The arts are a force for social cohesion and civic engagement. They make a major difference in child welfare and the arts fight poverty. Artists find one another and form neighborhoods. Cultural institutions grow up near them. Other people gravitate there. Businesses follow those people. Businesses hire and a vigorous local economy is born. Historically, unemployment was solved by having people move to where the jobs were. Today, that is not an option. With such widespread unemployment and so many mortgages underwater, we need a net increase of new activity. And that net increase can only come from two things, increased consumption and innovation. The arts provide both. There is a constant flow of new performances, new exhibitions, new works of art for Americans to consume and enjoy. And the arts drive creativity and innovation. The arts are key to building strong, vibrant, and sustainable communities. And if we underscore that message, if we shift the conversation to what the arts bring to the table, I believe that we will also have a stronger, more vibrant, and sustainable arts community as well. I'm very excited about the grants we are announcing today. 51 grants that cover the country from Ajo, Arizona to Wilson, North Carolina, from Sitka, Alaska to Opelika, Florida. So let me turn things over to the NEA's design director, Jason Schupach, who will present our inaugural portfolio of our town grants. Jason, take it away. Thanks, Rocco. Good afternoon, all. I'm thrilled to be able to present to you today the Our Town Awardees. As Rocco said, we are announcing 51 grants to communities for creative placemaking projects, projects that will help transform those communities into lively, beautiful, and sustainable places with the arts at their core. What is creative placemaking? Again, creative placemaking is when you strategically shape the physical and social character of a neighborhood, town, city, or region around the arts and cultural activities. Just a few brief other reminders about Our Town. These are partnership projects. They required a partnership between an arts or design organization and a local government, a city, county, or tribal government. Also, these are projects which are aimed at reaching the NEA strategic plan goal of livability. American communities are strengthened through the arts. The 51 grants we are announcing today represent 34 states and $6,575,000 in funding. Over half of the 51 grants are from communities with a population of less than 200,000. That's 30 of them. In fact, 18 are from communities of less than 100,000. Eight are from communities less than 50,000, and six of those are from sparsely populated communities. Grantees could apply for a wide variety of activities. We are making grants for cultural planning, cultural asset mapping, festivals, artist space, cultural facilities, public space design, public art, creative entrepreneurship, and arts engagement. We'll look at two examples for each of these type of activities, or 18 of the 51 total. Let's start with the grants that represent the first steps of creative placemaking work in a community, cultural asset mapping and cultural planning. We'll begin in Ajo, Arizona. Ajo is a small, rural, former mining town in the far southwest of Arizona, which was built on the design principles of the 1890s City Beautiful movement, the same principles used to design the National Mall in DC. The International Sonoran Desert Alliance with the town of Ajo will create a master plan for the adaptive reuse of the town's historic plaza and town center for creative uses. The project will specifically address public space use, wayfinding, streetscape design, future public art sites, and linkages between all sites. It is anticipated 
that the redevelopment of Ajo's town center will strengthen and promote Ajo's tricultural heritage, benefiting Ajo's population of approximately 3,750 and several nearby villages in the Tohono O'odham Nation. In Charleston, West Virginia, the Our Town grant will support a series of cultural planning activities to strengthen the role of public art. The project will be carried out by the City of Charleston in partnership with the Charleston Renewal Authority, the Charleston Area Alliance, and the Clay Center for the Arts and Sciences. Planning activities will include development of policies and guidelines for public art, a complete inventory of existing public art, including maintenance needs, identification of priority sites for future public art pieces, education and community outreach, and establishing a local arts development organization through city government. Many projects begin with the mapping of cultural assets in an area, be they individuals, organizations, businesses, or structures. The city of Dubuque, Iowa, with a diverse set of local partners, will undertake a planning process related to the Dubuque Historic Millwork District. The district contains over 1 million square feet of historic warehouse space ideal for urban mixed-use development. Project activities supported by the endowment will include an inventory of the buildings and development of designs for the adaptive reuse of historic structures as cultural facilities and artist live workspaces. You can see here a before and after in the bottom two images by a developer associated with the project. The funds will also support engagement of artists and arts organizations in the planning process. Back on the East Coast in Philadelphia, we are funding a project which has the potential to revolutionize the way that creative assets are tracked and mapped in a community. The Reinvestment Fund and the University of Pennsylvania's Social Impact of the Arts Project will develop a creative assets mapping database for the city. This project will document the city's creative assets, including the range of organizations and individuals active in Philadelphia's creative and cultural economy. It will also identify clusters of creative activity in underserved areas, research the relationship between cultural engagement and economic development, and develop a tool that will inform government strategies to grow the local creative economy. The partners will test the prototype database, engage the community to collect feedback, and build a website to expand the reach of the data. Now let's talk festivals. The recommended grant to Art Prize in Grand Rapids, Michigan will support Art Prize 2011, an art competition and event open to artists worldwide with prizes awarded by public vote. The art submissions are housed by museums, businesses, restaurants, stores, parks, and other existing spaces within a three-square-mile area of Grand Rapids during a free two-week festival. The annual event, now in its third year, showcases the city's downtown neighborhoods, cultural institutions, and historic infrastructure, and provides a measurable economic boost for businesses. The NEA investment will assist the organization in planning a stabilized fiscal operation for the festival for years to come and will assist in the creation of a mobile app by which any participant can vote for the art piece they like and comment on the event. Grand Rapids has a population of about 180,000, and organizers anticipate over 300,000 people to attend Art Prize this fall. This is a photo of an art piece in 2010 where 100,000 paper planes were thrown off the top of buildings down to the crowd. Our town will support Alaska Arts Southeast in Sitka, Alaska, to undertake the Sitka Festival of the Arts, Humanities, and Natural Sciences. The 10-week festival will serve as the first step towards transforming the historic former Sheldon Jackson College campus into a multidisciplinary arts education campus for residents of and visitors to Sitka. These are pictures of the campus, which will host the festival. These are pictures from past programs of Alaska Arts Southeast featuring youth from the community. More than 320 Sitka residents have put in almost 8,000 hours 
of volunteer labor to perform initial restoration tasks and will continue to be essential to the project's success. Sitka is a community of about 8,500 residents on an island in southeast Alaska. Now let's talk about grants that deal with the planning and design of places, artist spaces, cultural facilities, and public spaces. Excellent design has been proven to lower operating costs and increase longevity of physical structures. Excellent design also makes structures more functional for the people who use them. And excellent design contributes enormously to the aesthetic quality of a project. We're going to start with the artist space. In Honolulu, our town will support Pai Foundation to develop plans for a traditional Hawaiian cultural center. Related programming will showcase and support contemporary native Hawaiian artists and traditional cultural practitioners. The cultural center will include classroom space, performance space for hula, music, and other traditional practices, and live workspace for artists and their families. Artist gatherings, public planning meetings, workshops, festivals, and other outreach activities will engage the community throughout the building development process and promote opportunities for social engagement and creative collaboration. Hamilton, Ohio is a small city on the north of the Cincinnati metropolitan area. This recommended project supports the design of the Artspace Hamilton Lofts. The project will be carried out by Artspace Projects, Inc., with many local partners. The Artspace Hamilton Lofts will convert a vac two vacant story historic buildings in downtown Hamilton into a 36-unit affordable live-work facility that will serve artists and their families. Here's a photo of what the current building looks like. And here's a rendering of what it will look like when complete. Transformation of these structures into a lively center of arts activity will contribute to the cultural and economic revitalization of Hamilton's central business district. Artspace Projects has completed a market study which showed an existing unmet demand for artist spaces in this area. Now on to the design and planning of cultural facilities. The Our Town Grant in Kansas City, Missouri will support the multitude of partners listed on the screen to do the pre-development, design, and community planning phases of the restoration of the Boone Theater in the 18th and Vine Jazz District. The project is designed to strengthen the existing arts and cultural district by transforming a blighted, vacant space, which currently separates critical venues from one another, into a vibrant cultural center that provides continuous programming and coordination with other live music presenters in the district. A community planning process will engage the neighborhood's cultural institutions, residents, and businesses in generating a vision for the facility that will honor John Blind Boone, the theater's namesake and an African-American concert pianist who, whose music bridged folk and ragtime traditions. Folk Alliance International, an organization that fosters and promotes folk music, dance, and related performing arts, is expected to occupy and manage the renovated theater. The 18th and Vine Jazz District has an estimated residential population of approximately 7,000 people, 90% of whom are African American. Now let's go to, the rural Texas, to rural Texas, to the town of Marfa. Marfa is located in Presidio County along the Texas-Mexico border and has a population of 2,121 and is famous for Donald Judd's Chinati Foundation and the Marfa Mystery Lights. Ballroom Cultural Arts Foundation has partnered with the county and over two dozen local, regional, and national cultural organizations to support a multi-stage landscape improvement plan for the Vizcano County Park. The park will serve as a permanent home for the drive-in, a new outdoor venue for music, film, and the performing arts. Designed by acclaimed architects Moss, the drive-in will be a sculptural reinterpretation of the classic drive-in theater. The drive-in will be used by the entire community in a number of ways. As a drive-in theater with an innovative landscape that allows cars to park on an angle and look up at the screen, for private screenings, recitals, concerts, music festivals, and much more. The park has been traditionally used by the Mexican-American community and the project is designed to provide direct public access to the arts for the town of Marfa, surrounding communities, and tourists. 
Now on to the design and planning of public space and city infrastructure. In 2000, the city of Fargo built 20 drainage basins in response to the disastrous flooding of the Red River. Little consideration was given to the aesthetic and urban impacts and the resulting basins disrupt low-income neighborhoods. The city of Fargo and River Keepers, a local environmental design nonprofit, will start a participatory public art process wherein residents of a selected Fargo neighborhood will work with the ecological artist Jackie Bruckner to design and transform an existing stormwater basin into a neighborhood commons. Activity sponsored by the endowment will establish a model for an ongoing public art program in Fargo that will bring art, sculpture, landscape, and public space improvements into each of the 20 effective neighborhoods. You can see here some images of Bruckner's work. In addition to launching the pilot project with Bruckner, a step-by-step -step guide will be published to ensure both the continuation of the initiative in Fargo and for use by other communities seeking to develop positive relationships between citizens and the watersheds in which they live. The Our Town grant in Tacoma, Washington will support a collaborative design process for the redesign of the Tacoma Art Museum Plaza and surrounding Pacific Avenue streetscape. Pacific Avenue is downtown Tacoma's main street and is a nexus of major cultural and community assets. However, it is currently an underutilized zone with limited pedestrian use. This project will transform the site into an active epicenter and iconic gateway for downtown Tacoma. The design will include innovative stormwater infrastructure, public art, outdoor event space, and signage elements that enhance public access to the museum district. Olson Kundig Architects, with a team of landscape architects, urban planners, and environmental artist Lorna Jordan will develop design concepts, one of which you can see here. Now let's talk about public art. There are quite a few grants which will fund both temporary and permanent public art. We'll discuss two. East Bay Center for the Performing Arts is an important community anchor in Richmond, California. With support from many partners, the center will commission an interactive art installation by new media artist Scott Snivy. The work will feature professionally choreographed and video recorded motions of Richmond youth, reflecting both the diversity of the local population and the multicultural dance, rhythm, and performance programs taught and performed at the center. The new interactive piece will be installed on the exterior of the renovated center and is expected to activate the adjacent public plaza and bring new pedestrian activity to the Iron Triangle neighborhood. This area of downtown Richmond has suffered from harsh poverty, chronic violence, and a history of racial tension. And the proposed artwork builds on a series of recent initiatives targeting its renaissance and revitalization to increase lighting, safety, and cultural activity. The Bass Museum of Art, in partnership with the City of Miami Beach's Art in Public Places program, and many other partners will create a new public art program that includes a curated selection of temporary outdoor projects and local residencies for international artists. The artworks will activate the City Center Arts District, a roughly 40 block area that is home to many of South Florida's most prominent cultural facilities. The partners will identify artist projects that are contextually relevant to Miami Beach and to the social context of the specific site where the work will be placed. Preference will be given to interactive projects, and selected artists will live and work in Miami Beach in residencies that range from one to three weeks. Here's some photos by Jim Drain and Ellen Harvey, two of the selected artists. Strategic marketing and targeted outreach campaigns will be conducted in conjunction with the installations, bringing visibility to the arts district as a cohesive destination rather than simply the location of any single cultural institution. Support for creative workers is another strong theme of the Our Town grants. Let's discuss two grants which support creative entrepreneurship. The Fort Collins Our Town project will help artists across the West develop their careers. The city of Fort Collins is working in close collaboration with Beat Street, a local innovative arts and artist assistance organization, as well as the Colorado and Nevada State Arts Councils, and other partners 
to support the creation of the Rocky Mountain Regional Arts Incubator in the historic Carnegie Building in downtown Port Collins, which you can see here. The incubator will offer to students and professionals a multitude of services to assist them in creating, redefining, and sustaining their creative careers in the new economy. Endowment funding will support the partner's development of incubator curricula, public programming, and a strategic and physical planning process for the building. You may have been wondering why the Nevada Arts Council would be enthusiastic about a project in Colorado, two states away. Well, here's why. New technologies and distance learning opportunities will be integrated to provide professional development training and regional networking that is expected to support artists and arts organizations not just in Fort Collins, but throughout the entire Rocky Mountain West. The City of Wilson, with all the partners you see here, will use the Our Town funding to repair and conserve the unique large-scale whirly gigs created by internationally recognized artist Wallace Simpson. This process will prep the Whirligigs for installation in the future Wallace Simpson Whirligig Park in downtown Wilson. This photo represents just a few of these amazing structures. The project will serve as a national model by establishing conservation protocols for vernacular art and generate new employment and training opportunities associated with conservation of Simpson's artworks. And finally, I'd like to present two wonderful organizations which will undertake creative placemaking to engage their communities in unique, impactful ways. Trey McIntyre Project, with its Our Town grant, will perform community engagement activities and outreach dance performances in advance of the City of Boise's 150th anniversary celebration. The Trey McIntyre Company will remain in Boise rather than tour to, in order to engage the community. They will also collaborate with the city on planning for the year-long arts festival. The Trey McIntyre Company will dance for patients in hospitals, children in schools, professionals in their workplaces, and other Boise residents. This will bring dance into the everyday lives of individuals who do not normally seek out the arts on their own, as well as to underserved populations in Boise. The Worm Farm Institute, which Rock referred to in his opening, is a unique entity in rural Sauk County, Wisconsin, population 7,000. There's an image of the worm farm itself. It's a farm that grows vegetables, not worms, and a farm that hosts and produces all kinds of artistic activity. With the Our Town funding, Worm Farm will plan, pilot, and evaluate the Farm Art Detour as part of the annual Fermentation Fest event in partnership with the county and many local partners including local farmers and artists. Fermentation Fest is a festival they call a live culture convergence that pairs arts activities with lively food and farming events based on fermentation for a two-week annual event. The detour is an addition to the festival. The detour will entail tours primarily along rural roads in northern Sauk County featuring farm-based ephemeral art installations and performances artists designed and built mobile farm stands, and interpretive signage about rural culture and local arts, food, and farming communities. You can see here a few images of some of the completed and planned farm stands and an example of the type of art they are thinking about for the farms on the detour. The tour is expected to strengthen and diversify the regional arts and farming economies. Here's a quote that I love from their application. Rather than compete for scarce resources for the arts, agriculture, and community revitalization, we will link non-traditional partners, forging alliances across disciplines, utilizing the vision of artists to explore the timeless connections between land and people. So here's the full list of the 51 communities receiving our town's funding. Thank you so much. I'm proud to present to you this groundbreaking series of creative placemaking projects, and we'll now open for questions. Great. Thank you so much, Jason. Just a couple of housekeeping reminders for everyone listening. If you would like to ask a question, please use the text box uh, in your webinar uh, interface and type the question. We have some questions that have come in we'll begin with. We will be giving uh, priority to members of the media. Uh, another housekeeping note. 
This PowerPoint presentation and this audio will be posted on arts.gov tomorrow. If you would like to uh, have a copy of it for your use, please feel free to be in touch with the NEA's Public Affairs Office. So let's dive into a couple questions. Uh, Jason, let's begin with a question that came in from Michigan Radio. Mm -hmm. They were, not surprisingly, particularly interested in art prize. And they were curious about two things. One, what the panel responded to in terms of application. And two, this is an event that gets a lot of corporate sponsorships and, and different grants. And they wondered uh, why this was something that the NEA decided to fund. And I thought maybe you could talk a little bit about the specific aspect that we're funding. Right. Uh, I think what, what the panel found appealing uh, was exactly what I spoke about. Uh, the fact that this brings in an enormous amount of people into the downtown of Grand Rapids to see free art. It has an enormous and measurable economic impact in downtown Grand Rapids, and the quality of the art is, is very high. Um, uh, specifically about the funding question, um, you know, we actually do not base uh, our we don't base our decisions based on the need of an applicant. That's uh, that's a rule here at the NEA. So, uh, but also, um, you know, specifically, they came in asking us to help them kind of get their fiscal shop in order, and not that it's out of order. Um, but to assist with that process and also to fund a mobile application. And so uh, specifically those will be the pieces that we'll be funding of that project. That's great. Thank you so much. Uh, Rocco, a question for you. It was a requirement of these grants that the local government be one of the partners in this. In most cases, the mayor's office signed on to this. Why was that important to you as an aspect of this? Well, obviously to me anyway, it's the people on the ground uh, who, know, who know the territory. Uh, the, the local political structure, the people who are there, know their communities, know, uh, know the artists, know the work, uh, and they're the best guides that we could possibly have to um, the most effective funding. I mean, we, we, you know, we're talking about creative placemaking. It's all about place. It's all local. And um, we, this should be a ground-up process, not something that's dictated uh, the other way around. I think it's great. I mean, looking at the list, you've had a chance over the last couple of years to meet with some different mayors. And I think of Mayor Sanders in San Diego or Mayor Nutter in Philadelphia, uh, Mayor Landrieu in New Orleans. Anything stand out about these or any other mayors in terms of their support for the arts and understanding of it? Well, the mayors are really our, our, our most natural allies because they are looking for ways to rejuvenate their neighborhoods and communities. And many of the mayors, you just mentioned three of them, and um, my relationship with, with uh, Mitch Landrews started before he was a mayor when he had the cultural portfolio in the uh, state of Louisiana. Uh, these mayors and the other ones, uh, Mayor Nutter, Mayor Sanders, and many, of, many others, uh, really do appreciate the role the arts can play in, in, uh, in community building. And that's, uh, that, that's our agenda. The mayors, the mayors get this better than anyone. That's great. Uh, Jason, let me ask you one follow-up to that. Um, I noticed in looking through the list of grants that a couple came in uh, that are involved with tribal communities. And can you just talk about tribal communities as local government and some of the outreach we did to them? Absolutely. We were thrilled that a number of uh, tribal communities were either partners on projects or the lead on projects. Um, absolutely, tribal communities were eligible, and we did make great efforts to reach out to those communities. Um, the grant we're making to Evergreen College in Shelton, Washington, is specifically partnered with the Squaxin tribe up there to tr teach within the tribe uh, the traditional artist traditions and then show those artworks as part of a large canoe festival that will be um, all over the state to really you know, educate the state about the quality of these tribal artworks there. So we're thrilled to have them as partners, and they, they showed up all over the place in these grants. That's great. And then in terms of outreach, which you had mentioned, um, a couple of people are curious to know about the total number of applications we received, which I think is one way of looking at how successful we were at the outreach. How many applications did we receive for Art Town? Uh, we received about 400, well, we received exactly 447 statements of interest. That's great. Um, a couple uh, other little housekeeping things. Um, folks are curious about a full list of grantees and projects descriptions. That will be avail That is available now on arts.gov. And a couple folks are interested in knowing whether our town will be uh, recurring. Is this an area of funding that the NA will do again? Uh, and we do plan on uh, doing uh, another round of our town funding. Let me ask another question for Jason that's, that's come in. For a couple of these projects, I'm thinking about Art Prize, certainly Tacoma, I think also Richmond. 
one of the aspects that was really of interest is the concept of foot traffic and sort of getting feet on the streets in some neighborhoods and, and different kinds of activity. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the relationship between arts organizations and foot traffic and bringing people into a neighborhood? Well, I think it's been shown over and over and over that the arts put, uh, put feet on the street. Um, you know, it's, it's no secret that when a performing arts center or even a performing event, event happens somewhere, um, people show up and they don't just spend money on the event, they go to dinner, they uh, buy things in the shops nearby. And I think that's one of the, that's one of the really well understood secondary, or those are many of the well understood secondary economic benefits that can come from um, the arts in a community. I think that's great. Um, Rocco, you had referenced a little bit some research that was done by Mark Stern and the University of Pennsylvania about some of the, some of the um, benefits of the arts to communities overall. Can you just expand a little bit on, um, on what some of those benefits are? Well, what, what Mark Stern and his partner, uh, Susan Seifert, did was they looked at two cities, Philadelphia and, and Baltimore, over a long period of time. 10 years, uh, so it was really a, a very uh, comprehensive and exhaustive study. And they compared neighborhood to neighborhood, uh, neighborhoods that had a cultural presence or cultural institutions and organizations and ones that didn't. And some of the findings were quite remarkable. Where you had um, a, a cultural presence, three large uh, phenomena were, were uh, observable. One is that those communities uh, where there were, was, was an arts presence, people tended to be much more in, engaged in other civic activities. They were more likely to vote. They were much more likely to join other organizations. That arts became a, a, a real force for civic cohesion. Uh, the second aspect was in child welfare. Uh, and, I, and I alluded to this too in, in, uh, in, in, in my remarks, where, where um, there is a cultural presence uh, there are demonstrably lower levels of uh, juvenile, juvenile delinquency and truancy. And finally, um, the arts are an economic driver, um, and we've been highlighting that now for, uh, for almost, almost two years, where you have um, uh, cultural districts, where you have arts clusters, where you have artists. Uh, this tends to be a driver of, of um, population inflow, people coming, and businesses following, and, and, uh, and economic activity generally. So there's a lot of uh, data. Uh, that, that show the arts have these measurable demonstrative uh, positive effects. That's great. Um, Jason, let me ask a sort of a follow-up to that. Um, you're the design director and some of these projects involve building something new or architecture or design or, or rehabbing or reusing a building. Um, there are some projects, however, like um, Trey McIntyre in Boise, for instance, that don't involve a building per se. It's a dance community doing something. Uh, it's a dance organization doing something in the community. So a two-part question. One, what is sort of the role of an arts organization creative place making when it doesn't involve a new or a changed building? And then two, what are some of the benefits that you're looking in that kind of project? Absolutely. Well, I, that's a great question. Uh, again, these are projects that are focused on strengthening American communities through the arts and strengthening the livability of a community. And absolutely, um, access to the arts is something that's essential to uh, making a community livable. Um, we all know that the arts have impacts on social cohesion. Um, when when the uh, when uh, an arts event maybe happens in a community. So if you look at, uh, I think maybe the second picture really spoke well around what Trey McIntyre can do. They're either performing all over the city and exposing people who don't usually have exposure to dance to dance, it's a wonderful thing, and it, really, it does lead to a different aspect. It may not be the economic impact that we're going to be measuring, but it's really the, the social impact. It's the impact on that aspect of the livability of the community that we're absolutely concerned with and trying to support also. That's great. Uh, let me ask you one small detail question that just came in from the Architects newspaper. Uh, did you receive statements of interest from all 50 states? Yes. Excellent. And Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rico. So all 50 states and, and one of the territories. That's fabulous. Um, another question that's come in from yeah, a, couple, <laughs> and a couple of folks. Right. Great. Uh, another question that's come in from a couple of folks. Um, creative placemaking is rather easy to understand when you're talking about a place with dense population. If there are lots of people close to each other, lots of physical things close to each other, lots of activities, rather easy to get a mind around them now. Some of these projects, um, Sitka, Alaska, Ajo, Arizona, 
uh, just to name a couple at the beginning of the alphabet uh, in terms of states, involve smaller communities, uh, communities with populations of under 8,000, I think, in both of those cases. Can you just talk a little bit about the role of place placemaking in rural communities? Absolutely, and we were thrilled to see a number of rural communities uh, come in, and I think that you know, creative placemaking, again, is working with your arts organizations, artists, and creative people in your community that exists there to do something to improve the livability of that community, no matter what its size. You're working with your local assets. Who's there in your backyard that can do something that's interesting that will increase the livability of that community? So the size of the community kind of doesn't matter. It really matters about who's there. That's why sort of cultural asset mapping and figuring out who's there is an important step in this process. So I, I don't think the size of the community necessarily matters. There's, of course, different issues you're dealing with. I think Worm Farm, again, has, is dealing with that in a really interesting way. They looked in their backyard and they said, we have farmers and we're artists. Let's do something together. Let's do something creative together. You know, farmers can, are creative people too. And that's really the magic of that, that application and many of the other rural ones. That's great. Um, a question. Um, one of the grantees, not one of the ones you highlighted, but one of the ones on the list, is the Shreveport Regional Arts Council. And uh, Mayor Glover was one of the grantees in the Shreveport Regional Arts Council uh, for an MICD 25 grant. What is the relationship between this grant and the MICD 25 grant? Well, the MICD 25 grant was uh, to Shreveport was for them to, to uh, look at restoring uh, an old fire, firehouse as part of uh, Arts District project, moving the Shreveport Arts Council into that firehouse as part of this district, uh, new district that they're planning called the Shreveport Common in downtown. The, this grant is also part of the Shreveport Common effort. This grant will be supporting a transportation hub, uh, the design and planning for a transportation hub within that district, including artists and high quality designers in the process of design of that transportation hub. So they're, they're in an intelligent way sort of picking off pieces and planning uh, very clearly ahead an arts district project. Great project. That's great. Uh, we have time for probably about three more questions. So if anyone would like to add a question, please feel free to send it in now. Um, Rocco, a little bit of a personal question for you. How did you first become interested at looking at your biography? You wouldn't necessarily assume that creative placemaking would be the thing where you'd sort of make your mark or uh, sort of be your talking points. How did you first become interested in this concept? What, what grabbed you? Well, from the first day, uh, I felt that I wanted to be at what, what I refer to as uh, the intersection of, of the arts and the, and the real world, uh, people's daily lives, communities. I felt that if, uh, in, in, in this time of um, uh, extremely challenged uh, resource availability, if we were going to have an impact, it was going, it was going to be in our relationship with, with things that are very, very important to people, their, their communities, where they live, the economy. And um, our town, creative placemaking, um, relates direct, directly to, to that. That's great. Um, Jason, if someone was interested in the sort of whole notion of creative placemaking and wanted more resources, can you name some of the things at the NEA that we have that are available to sort of help people learn more about this? Absolutely. I encourage you to go on arts.gov and look at several things. One, I would download a research report. Uh, we we published by Ann Markson and Ann God Godwa called Creative Placemaking. Um, there's a good executive summary for some quick reading, and then there's an excellent uh, longer report that you should download both. You can also look at uh, the MICD25 grants description. Those give a good outline of a wide variety of creative placemaking activities. The grants descriptions for our town will now be online, too. Obviously, we think these are good ideas around creative placemaking. Um, and I, there's a few videos that I did explaining what creative placemaking uh, is and uh, several other resources, I believe, on the research website. So um, you might also want to take a peek at some of the work we did around the Mayor's Institute on city design. Um, uh, and also, if you're working on festivals, there's a wonderful uh, report we just published on festivals and their impact in communities. That's great. Uh, and just so everyone knows, if you're interested in any of the resources that Jason just mentioned, we'll be linking to all of them as well as to the complete list of grantees in the newsroom on arts.gov. So if you'd like any of those resources or the full list of grantees, please log on to arts.gov and visit the newsroom uh, and this press release. Um, let's see, I'm just looking through to make sure we didn't miss uh, any questions. I think that is, oh, sorry, uh, one last question. 
um, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, from a good friend of the NEAs who cares a lot about evaluation, <laughs> can you talk a little bit about sort of the role of evaluation, the outcomes you're looking for um, with these grants? You, you'd begun to touch on it when you talked about livability. Right, so uh, we are absolutely looking not just for outputs, not just we did a festival, we had ex many performances, but really what was the outcome in that community? Um, you know, where there, uh, what was the effect on real estate prices? What was the effect on crime? What was the effect on uh, um, accessibility to the arts? So we're going to be looking for at a number of what we call indicators. Um, we're looking for national data sets that will help us measure those indicators over time. I think it's very important to remember that um, there is a, you know, this is sort of a, a new task to begin to look at uh, measuring a lot of these indicators. And the impacts of many of these grants will not happen for uh, quite a number of years, so we will have to be looking at their impacts over many, many years. But we, there's certainly a great effort going on here to figure that out and to help the grantees uh, measure that and to help the NEA track those impacts. That's great. Rocco, any last closing thought you want to leave us with? Well, I think this really is um, a window into what now is the, the central playbook of the, uh, of, of the NEA. This is uh, a very, very important agenda for us. And I'm very, very excited that it's now really, really underway and, and, and taking off. I think it has a, has a big future, and I think it's only going to uh, multiply and leverage resources throughout the whole country. That's great. Thanks so much, Rocco. And many thanks to all of you for joining us today. Uh, as I mentioned, you'll get the listing of all 51 grantees and the complete project description at the NEA's website, arts.gov. A couple of you have mentioned that it's not up there yet. It'll probably be up there in about five minutes. Uh, if it hasn't hit yet, we're just waiting for, for that to wend its way through the, through the process. The, this webinar, today's webinar, the presentation and its audio will be archived in its entirety and will be available beginning tomorrow on arts.gov and everyone who registered for the webinar today will receive a direct link to that. Finally, I just want to thank everyone for joining us and encourage you to please stay in touch with us through our website, arts.gov, through our Facebook page, and via Twitter. We're at NEA Arts. Thanks again and look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you.